So PlayStation 2 emulation on the Mac has now been upgraded. This is all thanks to a major new update in PCSX2 version 2. The first new stable release of PCSX2 for many years now, which now includes a full Mac port. We also have a brand new standardized UI, big picture support, retro achievements, per game settings, and dozens of in-game fixes and performance upgrades as well. So you might be thinking, why are we using PCSX2? Don't we already have a native Mac emulator for PlayStation 2 games? Unfortunately, that emulator called EtherSX2 has now halted in development. And so the open source community has turned its attention to PCSX2 instead. And even though PCSX2 still runs under an Intel binary translated through Rosetta 2, its performance has now improved so much that it can easily run at three or four times native resolution, even on the nearly four year old M1 MacBook Air with only eight gigabytes of RAM, which is what I'm testing on today. So in this video, I'm gonna be testing out some of the new features of PCSX2. I'll be showing you how to install this emulator set it up with your controller, walk through some of the graphics settings and also new features including retro achievements and big picture mode, as well as patches, cheats and per game settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the PCSX2.net website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And what we're going to do is to download the latest version of the stable release of PCSX2. So we have the Windows versions here, Linux version, but we want the macOS version here, version 2.02, .02, which is the latest at the time of recording. Go ahead and click on that. It's going to start downloading if we press allow. And then what we're going to do is minimize this and then we'll open up finder and then go to our downloads folder and then within the downloads folder we're going to double click on this pcsx2.tar.xz just double click and it's going to extract and once that's extracted we have the pcsx2 icon here which we're going to go ahead and drag and drop into our applications folder so we'll move this into applications and then we'll scroll down until we find pcsx2 so we'll find this here then we'll double click on this icon so if you have an issue opening this you can hold down the control key and then click on this and then press open and then you'll have the option here to manually open it. But if you're using macOS Sequoia, you can go to the Apple logo here, go to system settings, and then under privacy and security, if we go here, and then we scroll to the bottom, then we can find the application that we've tried to open that's been blocked. So click on here, open anyway, and then we can go ahead and close this. We can open anyway for PCSX2. Then we're gonna type in our password and then press okay. And now PCSX2 has opened up. So we're gonna go through the standard setup process, press next. And so what we need to do is to add our PS2 BIOS. So for legal reasons, I cannot show you how to acquire a PS2 BIOS. You'll need to actually grab this from an actual PS2 unit that you own. And then you can go through the process of dumping your own BIOS into an image file. And once you're ready, you can go ahead and click this button, open BIOS folder, and then you can drag and drop the BIOS into there. So luckily I have my own BIOS folder ready. I'm just gonna go to that now. So the file that we're looking for is this one here basically the scph39001.bin is basically the one that most people are going to require. So once you've placed it in the correct folder, we're going to refresh list and then we've got the US BIOS for the PlayStation 2. So once that's ready, we're going to press next. And now it's asking us for a directory which contains our ISO. So of course, I cannot show you where to download these PlayStation 2 ISO files from. You should be ripping them from your own PS2 discs. However, I'm going to add my own directory of pre-prepared PS2 ISOs. This folder contains various ISOs. I'm going to press open here. Here it's asking us whether we want to recursively search, so that means searching the subfolders, press yes, and then press next. Here we're going to configure the controllers. So I have a controller attached to my computer already, the Xbox One wireless controller, which I've already paired up. So you can do this by going to system settings, going to Bluetooth, and then put your controller into pairing mode by holding down the sync button and then add it as a nearby device. I've already done that here and I'm gonna be configuring this as a DualShock 2 controller. The way I'm gonna do this is to click on automatic mapping and then click on the STL0, the Xbox series controller, which I've already paired via Bluetooth. And then that's already mapped all of my controls here. If you have a second controller, you can do that here as well. Here I'm gonna press next. And now the setup is complete, I'm gonna press finish. So now all of the games have loaded up here and these are all of the games in the directory, which we added because earlier. Now there's a couple of ways to display this. You can actually have them in the list like this or you can display them with the cover art if you click this grid icon here. If you want to find out how to download the covers automatically I'll leave a link in the description for this github page here for PS2 covers. All you need to do is to scroll down to the PCSX2 setup then we're going to press the copy button here for default covers 
and then go back to PCSX2, go to Tools, go to Cover Downloader, and then we're gonna control click and paste this URL and then press Start. And then it's basically gonna download all of the cover art for all of the games we have in the folder that we set up earlier. So press Close here, and this is basically all of the games that we have. You can go ahead and maximize this, minimize this, etc. This basically now contains all of the games in the folder that we processed earlier. So first thing I'm gonna do is just configure some of the graphics settings. So one thing that's new about PCSX2 is the fact that we now have per game settings which are going to be remembered but you can set some default settings when you actually open up games so for example here I'm going to set mine to widescreen if we click this button it's going to automatically apply widescreen patches in terms of rendering here we can change the internal resolution I like to have mine at something at 1080p 3x and then we have the ability to replace textures processing effects on screen display and recording as well so these are all of the kind of graphic settings in the corner here and um, this is probably the most relevant section for any games so what I'm going to do now is to load up a game so we're going to load up Shadow of the Colossus one of the most challenging PlayStation 2 games to actually load up here it's got a recommendation for setting the burning accuracy to this game to full so once we've actually loaded up a game we can actually change some of the settings here if we're going to go to settings and then emulation we can change some of the graphics and rendering and it's asking us to change this to full which gives a lower speed PCSX2 on Mac is pretty good we don't necessarily need all of that speed to begin with I want to push this green button here to maximize this if you want to take the status bar off you can do here we've got pretty much 60 frames per second running at 1080p and this is running on my MacBook Air with the M1 chip which is not too bad at all. So despite the fact that this is running through Rosetta 2 it's actually extremely impressive that this is all running through the Metal Renderer. We're running this pretty much at 60 frames per second despite the fact that this is going at three times native resolution and we have all of those fixes applied. So another cool feature is Big Picture Mode which you can enable by clicking on System and then Start Big Picture Mode and then this means that you can basically control the entire PCSX2 interface using your controller. So you can go ahead and launch games and come out of games pretty easily. Here we're going to launch God of War 2. So this is now God of War 2 running and we don't have any of those issues what we previously had with PCSX2 where we had the kind of blurring on God of War 2. These fixes have already been applied to this game and is looking and running beautifully on the Mac. So this is being scaled three times native resolution running at 60 frames per second. So very good performance. Also, many games like Burnout 3 now feature patches. So if we load up a game, go to settings and then go to game properties, we can go ahead and tweak various patches and cheats. So these are automatically loaded in. Here we're going to enable 16 by 9, 60 FPS for menus, 60 FPS for crashes, progressive scan. You can even do things like change miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So enable this. There's also a menu for cheats as well. So if you want to add in cheats by going into Finder, pressing the option button, loading up library, go to application support, then go to PCSX2 and then within the cheats folder if you add in cheats into here then they'll appear in the relevant games. You can also do things like set up retro achievements by going into the system settings, click on achievements and then log into your retroachievements.org account which is completely free. So I've logged in now and basically all your game's progress is going to be tracked on the retro achievements website and achievements will be logged for everything that you do in all of these PS2 games. So in a way, it looks like PlayStation 2 emulation on the Mac is looking better than ever. And we were afraid that when EtherSX2 halted its development, that this would mean the end of PS2 gaming on a Mac as well. However, with all of these new developments for PCSX2, including the fact that we now have a concurrent Mac port along with Windows and Linux, means that PlayStation 2 development is safe in the hands of the open source community. So in a way, let me know in the comments what you think about PCSX2 version 2 now coming out on Mac. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.